Anybody that has been following my channel for a little while knows that I love HTOP. HTOP is my favorite system monitor application. So if I'm taking a look at a Linux distribution for the very first time, I typically fire up HTOP to check out CPU and RAM usage. And the reason I do this is because HTOP is kind of like the de facto system monitoring application for GNU slash Linux, right? It's kind of the standard, and on most Linux distributions, it's already installed. Uh, not on every Linux distribution. Some, you do actually have to go out of your way to install HTOP, but for the most part, it's usually there. And I like using the same tool to measure system resource usage across the various Linux distributions and desktop environments. So HTOP is the tool that I've kind of settled on. One of the things that I don't think most people know about is that HTOP is customizable. There are some options available to you. Most people don't take advantage of them. And to be honest, I'm one of those people. I typically don't really customize HTOP because out of the box, it's pretty good, right? The information it displays by default, it displays your CPU threads. So I have 24 threads with my CPU and that's why I've got so many going on here. Then we have RAM swap, uh, the tasks. Now that's the processes that are currently running the load average and then at the bottom is actually the process list so these are all the processes that are currently running on my computer and be a very long list if I scrolled down now you can sort this list by default it's sorting it by CPU percentage sometimes you want to sort it by memory percentage if you got some runaway process that's sucking up all your RAM you know, this is a good way to figure that out but you can sort it by various other things including process ID user priority niceness etc now, probably the most common thing people do with HTOP is find a process that is kind of out of control and you kill it. So uh, you do have uh, some hints here as far as what you can do with HTOP. F9 is the kill command. So if there's some crazy process that I want to kill, such as OBS here. Now, I don't want to kill OBS because that's the program recording my screen right now. But if I did, I could hit F9. Let me hit F9. And then it's going to ask exactly what kind of uh, kill command do I want. SIG term is the default and that's typically what you want. If I hit enter right now, it would actually kill OBS and, and stop me recording. So I'm actually not going to do that. But what a lot of people don't realize is F2 down here it says setup. And if you do F2, you actually get some customization options. So for example, uh, on the far left hand side, we have meters, display options, colors, columns. And if I go back to meters, these are actually what are being displayed at the top of the screen. Now my terminal color scheme is a little wonky here. This is actually black text on a black background. That's why we can't see what these columns are. But if I highlight it, you can see on the left column, we have CPUs. So that's half of my CPUs, so the first 12. And then the right column at the top, you have the other half of my CPUs, uh, so the other 12. And then obviously we have the memory bar, the swap bar on the left columns. And then on the right columns, we have the task counter and the load average. Now, one of the things that some people may want to change, especially if you have a ton of threads, like I've got 24 threads, to be honest, this takes up a lot of screen real estate, especially if I'm not running a terminal full screen. Maybe I'm only running running half a screen right, or a third of the screen. This is way too much screen real estate for these CPU meters. Uh, and that's for 24 threads. Now these days, CPUs is becoming more common to have, you know, 32 threads, 64 threads, even uh, 128 threads, which would be crazy. Yeah, like it would just take up the entire screen. So there are other CPU meters you could add. So if I go up here and I hit the delete key, I'll get rid of those bars. So now I'm left with memory swap, task, load average, which I do want. I'm going to leave those. But we have other CPU options here. No, actually, a lot of other CPU options for me, because I have 24 threads, you do have to be kind of careful which ones you pick. For example, this one here, one through four of eight means that for half of my threads, which are 12, it, it's going to divide them by eight and put them in equal columns. Well, 12 doesn't divide equally by eight, so that's not a good one for me. But 12 does divide equally by four. So I've got uh, one and two of four that would probably work for me. Let's try it. So I'm going to move this with the arrow keys, move it over to the left column. And there you go. I've got my first 12 
threads there of, of my thread ripper. But now instead of having the first 12 threads in one column in the left hand column, it divides it into two shorter columns. So that saves a little bit on screen real estate. So if I, you know, I'm moving the arrows, it moves around. But what I want to do is hit enter. It will save that. And then I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to go to CPUs three and four divided by four and put that in the right column and then hit enter to save it there and that is a much cleaner way of displaying those 24 threads than the way it was doing by default and of course there's nothing saying that i've got to keep it this way what i could do is hit enter again so i can still move this around i could actually move that to the left hand column i could actually put them all in one column and then i could put you know like a list of stuff like task and load average uh, matter of fact since we're just playing around maybe i want other than the task and load average maybe i also want uh, battery now I'm not on a laptop so battery doesn't make sense but let's just add it I could add date and time date and time might be useful information to have uh, displayed in HTOP I have 64 gigs of RAM on this machine so the likelihood that I will ever see a swap being used is, is pretty unlikely so I could actually get rid of that I'll just highlight the swap bar and hit the delete key just to get rid of that because that seems like something I probably am never going to see anyway some other information other than all the, the CPU information uh, disk IO could be interesting for some people uh, especially you system administrators maybe you want disk io network io hit enter on that some other options available se linux state overview won't do anything for me system d system state and overview i, I guess that tells you how many uh, uh system d processes are running uh, I, I guess i can keep that for now anyway i uh, that's just me playing around with the default setup as far as the meters then that's the top section of your h top if i hit escape you know then we get the the top meters how they look with the bottom process uh, thing going on that's your interactive processes here at the bottom you can actually customize the process list as well if I go back into F2 and I go into display options and this is one I often do turn on I kind of like having a tree view for my processes so I'm going to tick on those first two and I'm going to hit escape and tree view is really a nice visual way of viewing these processes as far as you know the processes that are related to each other you know in this kind of tree like view I'm gonna hit f2 to get back into setup go back into display options uh, most of this other stuff is is kind of superfluous stuff that doesn't matter too much like if i really wanted to the cpu meters at the top i can have them show the cpu frequency i don't know why you'd really want to do that but if i hit enter you see i tick that on and now it's showing the percentage being used and then out to the side the frequency I'm going to tick that back off if I wanted to. I could show CPU temperature out to the side of the percentages. Uh, that might be useful. I, I could see that being somewhat useful. The CPU frequency, I don't really need to see. If you want to change the temperatures to Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, you could tick that on. I will tick that on while I'm here. There's no reason not to. Some things that some people may want to play around with. By default, HTOP hides the kernel threads. If you wanted to see them, you could tick that off. Uh, I mean, I'm going to leave it off by default. You do have color options. So if you didn't want to use your default terminal color scheme, for example, if I wanted to do monochromatic, you know, I could do that. I find that kind of hideous. There's black on white, light terminal, midnight commander. Yeah, that's bad too. I'm going to go back to my default color scheme. Uh, you can also change the columns and that would be the columns in the interactive process list here at the bottom. You can change how all of that is sorted as well. One neat thing I sometimes do with HTOP is there is an option under display options for um, highlight program base name. I'm going to tick that on and then hit escape and it actually makes the actual program name bold if you're uh, terminal actually supports bold text if your font has a bold text. Now anytime you do this setup process in HTOP with F2 and you tick on various settings or turn off various settings, it does write that to a config file. So let me open up a graphical file manager. I'll open up PCmanfm and I'm going to go into .config in my home directory and in .config slash HTOP you'll find HTOP RC. And it's a plain text file. Let me just open that. I'll open that in Vim so you guys can see what it is. It's not very user friendly as far as 
you know, what it's actually setting here. I'm assuming all the ones that are set with zero and one are kind of like true and false. Is it ticked on or is it ticked off? But then you have things like fields equals and then this string of numbers. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Same thing. Left meter modes equals one, one, one. Right meter modes equals one, two, two. I'm not exactly sure what what some of that stuff is. So typically you're not going to be doing this kind of customization directly into this config file. This is just htop writes to this config file. I, I wouldn't play with it. Uh, you could version control it, I guess, if you find if you set everything in htop and wanted to save it to your, like a GitHub or a GitLab, I guess you could do that. But to be honest, it's so easy and so quick to quickly turn all of this stuff on and off. I, I, I honestly wouldn't bother. So that's just a little bit of what you can do with some of the customization options with HTOP. I know typically when you fire up HTOP, you're there for a specific reason, usually to search for a process and kill it. <laughs> Most people don't ever go into the setup stuff and you'll know, play with those settings. But now that you guys know it's there, maybe you want to play with it, especially those of you uh, that do like system admin work or whatever, and you use HTOP all the time. And, and you know, maybe you do actually want to customize, you know, especially some of what is displayed in that top section as far as some of the readouts and the meters. You know, do you want to see, you know, things like disk IO and network and things like that? Now, before I go, I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Epsi Dallas, Gabe Blue, Mitchell, Alan, and Kami, Archfit 30, Chuck, David, the other David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Polytech, Scott, Stephen, Spin, Wes, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.